The events of the day, every day. And Moneyline keeps you on top of Wall Street. The one cable network viewers worldwide turn to is CNN. We are tied on the scoreboard, but the Marauders actually lead this ball game because all they need is a win or a tie. And they are in the playoffs and the Raiders are not. The Raiders cannot afford a tie here. Deep kick taken right at the goal line. To the 20. Crosses the 25 and I think he loses the football. He does. Marcus thinks they've got it. They do. Pierce loses it. Coming away, number 51 on the football for the Marauders. Yoder has it, Bart Yoder. And oh my, a look at it from the end zone camp. Pierce tried to go up the middle, and the ball popped out right there. That was a train wreck. Mm. Skip, I don't look for a tie right now with 2.12 left in the third and 56 points already on that scoreboard. France more than likely will throw it. Pressure on, dumps it off, complete inside the 20-yard line, the tight end again. Georgian, who made another key catch. That time the ball was underthrown. He was able to scoop it up, make the catch on a big nine-yard pickup inside the 20. Franz did a super job. He had Sean Perez all over him. He did a great job to get rid of the ball in the vicinity. Georgian made a good catch, and he had a man all over him also. Raiders scrambling on defense. On the handoff, they very rarely have put the ball on the ground. Spin move for Rain Cloud, who's back in there after that 41-yard touchdown run early in quarter number three where he twisted his ankle after the run, but he is back in there now at the single setback position. First down pickup. Ball marked right outside the 15 at the 16-yard line. A minute 20 to play. Here in quarter number three, we're tied at 28. Looking to throw. Runs out of the pocket now and throws it away. Good smart move that time for Franz. Jason Franz, nobody open, didn't want to take the loss. Ends up throwing it out of bounds and away. The clock stops with 108 to play here in quarter number three. And that wind is very <laughs> important factor. It's got to be. You mentioned not only and throwing the football, but you touched up on a key thing with that wind coming at your face. You know, and they open up after being in a warm locker room, come out, face that wind. As they get set to go to the fourth quarter, one team is going to be <laughs> very weary. Second down from the 16, trying to set up the screen on the catch to the 10. Boy. Has blockers, but tripped up at the six yard line shy of the first down but the screen set up very nicely over there on that far side and a good run that time from jeff boyd coming out of the backfield skip when you we watch the replay here when you throw a lot and you you know you recognize the passing team you know you're going to get a lot of pressure from defenses a lot a big rush some stunts you've got to have the screen in fact a variety of screen passes as an integral part of your arsenal third down Boyd is the single setback now. Third and one, a handoff to get it to him, but uh, he fell down. Speaking of France, fell down before he made the handoff. Great penetration, number 65, whose name I don't have on my program, reached in there and grabbed a hold of an ankle and it happened to belong to the quarterback, Jason France, and uh, he almost caused a fumble right there. They're gonna measure this one. It is just short of the Riders' five yard line, and they're gonna bring the chains out. We're going to look at this. A stretch of the chains will be very important, and he has got it. Just by a couple of inches. Yep. First and goal then from the five. I don't think it would have been a big gamble at all. I'm sure they would have went for it. It just saves the time here. If you look at the Raider 
left sideline. Should try to <laughs> tell you about those shadows going on over there. Hopefully, might be able to kick the lights on here on that side of the field. <laughs> All right, first and goal. No, that's the quarter. That will do it for quarter number three. When we come back, it will be first and goal for the Marauders. They'll have it at the five-yard line. Pinocchio's Pizza, give them a call. It's hot and fresh, 761-1111. Enjoy your hot and fresh Pinocchio's Pizza. Call them up right now. It's going to be an exciting fourth and final quarter. You're watching the game of the week on WFTV. The score is tied at 28 between the Marauders and the Raiders. Strengthen your swing and improve your game at Lakeside Pitch and Golf. Practice your batting techniques with their baseball and softball pitching machines. Just 25 cents for seven pitches or polish up your stroke on the 13-acre driving range. Just $3 for a large bucket of balls or $2.50 for a small bucket. Lakeside Pitch and Golf is just a short drive from Weeks Park and they're open Tuesday to Sunday till dark, weather permitting. Lakeside Pitch and Golf, one mile past the State Hospital on the Archer City Highway. Fourth quarter action. And a key thing to talk about in quarter number three. While the Raiders were going into that strong wind, Skip, they touched the ball four times. The result, two fumbles and two punts. And Marcus was tying this game up while they had the wind to their back. But it's a different story for the next 12 minutes. Let's see what the Raiders can make of it. Another key thing, I'll, and we're, we're touch up on it more than likely when the Raiders had the football, because, well, well, let's get this call in first. First and goal for the five, student body, right. And bumped out at the five yard line. Trying to turn that corner is Jeff Boyd. Robin Pierce and then Kevin Owens both coming up to uh, to bump Boyd out of bounds. When we talk about the fourth quarter win, they know that uh, Ramon Flanagan is not noted for, for passing the football. So I'm sure that went into some of the decision making for the Marauder coaching staff and taking the win in quarter number three and forcing Flanagan and them to throw the football for the fourth quarter. Second and goal. A loss of one, this one from the six yard line. On a handoff up the middle, only a couple of yards there. It will be third down. Rain cloud on the carry to about the five yard line. And you think they're trying to be a little bit conservative right now. More than likely that what they would usually do is have that play action and roll out and throw the football. That's been effective. They have the full house backfield now. On a third down and goal from the five. Here's the option play. Good defensive play. He's not down, though. And now he finally gets covered up. His knee never did go to the turf that time. And good second and third effort for France. But it will not be enough for anything. A loss all the way back to the 12-yard line. And it's now decision time for the Marcus Marauders. Scott Saltzman couldn't bring him down. However, he held him in his grasp long enough for uh, some friends to get there and make the tackle and actually even lost yardage from where uh, Saltzman uh, turned him loose. So we're gonna have about a 29-yard field goal attempt. Fenderori with the kick, it is off to the left, it's no good. He had the distance into that wind, but the wind did push it off to the left. Here's and the replay on the previous play. You can see Saltzman had him right there. France does a great job to stay up. And then the tackle from uh, Rashad Hickman and others. And the uh, field goal attempt. Uh, Skip, you know soccer style kickers have a tendency to, to uh, hook, hook the it. ball to start with. And that, that stout win. And I'm looking at the flag right now and there's not a wrinkle in that flag. It's standing straight out. It just pushed the ball even further to the left. So the Raiders have new life. We are still tied at 28. On the pitch, Lewis, student body right. 
for us. Get, I'm sorry, we're seeing two totally contrasting offensive styles. Marcus runs the ball only to take the pressure off their passing game. Ryder throws the ball only to loosen up the defense so their running game can be more effective. Now, now, now do you question, here's a look at the, uh, at the kick, which will be an important factor if nobody gets anything going here. You see it sailing off and hooking. But I'll touch up on a, another key thing on why they didn't throw the football into the end zone. They were having great success in doing that. Montgomery, on a spin move, gets across the line of scrimmage. But that's it from there. Covering him up is Mike Barnett, the defensive lineman on the tackle, and the Raiders are forced with a third down. But a, a, a key thing to talk about was, you know, I thought that they would just come out, back them up, throw the ball in the end zone. Obviously, the uh, Marcus coaching staff has great confidence in their kicker, but that wind is just so incredibly strong coming down that ramp. Flanagan, option, keeps it, has room to run, crosses the 30, down at the 35, and it's a first down for Ramon Flanagan. And the Raiders keep the drive alive. Gutsy third down call on the option. Flanagan knows how to read, knows how, knows how to read it, and read it well. Well, instead of throwing the ball up the field, the Raiders look to get their speed outside the Marcus defense. And Ramon Flanagan certainly fits in that category. So a first down. The drive remains alive. Nine minutes. And ticking, quarter number four. Handoff, Lewis, quick opener. Dives inside the 40 to about the 38-yard line before Barnett covers him up, but actually he lost his footing there, or he still had more room to run. Mundrell Lewis on the run. And right now, you're down on the sideline. You want to work some time off the clock. You want this to be a long drive, and then maybe with... <laughs> Hopefully, depending on how much time they can tick off that clock, hopefully with at least inside two minutes, maybe, and come up with some points. You don't want to score too early. Handoff, Hickman, and Hickman is close to the first down. He needed to get across the 45, depending on the spot. From the spot, it will be close, and they, well, not close enough for a measurement, it will be a first down. And the drive stays alive. And that's exactly what you want to do. Hopefully pick up some quick first downs on third down. Make it third and short. And you can take some time off that clock. Eight touchdowns already today, Skip. I think Wayne LeBlue wants to be the last man with the ball in his hands. Lewis to the 49-yard line. And if they can get a good first and good second down call and be forced with that third and one, third and two, I'm sure they're, they're like that as they take more time off the clock. These two offenses have basically just traded knockout punches time and again this afternoon, and it may come down to who has the last possession. And do you see it played so far in quarters? First quarter, the Raiders, second quarter with the Marauders, and third quarter with some Marauders. Raiders need a big fourth quarter here. Pitch. Lewis, not close enough for an easy third down pickup. It will be third and a long three as Lewis gets it in Marauder territory at the 49-yard line. Skip, am I correct? Out of those eight TDs already today, seven of them have been with the wind. Only Mundriel Lewis's long 66-yard uh, run at the end of the second quarter is the only score into that win. 638, key third down call here. Option, Flanagan, can he get away? Breaks two tackles and has the first down. Oh my, just individual effort that time from Ramon Flanagan to pick up the first down. I promise you he had his eyes on that first down marker. Cuts inside, has to go against the grain, back up and right, he gets hit right there. You saw his head pop over to the right. He was looking at the first down marker to see how much more he had to go. And by about a foot, he moves the chains. 
All right. Sorry, you might have to turn up that brightness once they get into the shade here. Huh? <laughs> it's really hard for our campers. First and 10. Hand off. Lewis, quick opener to the 30 and inside the 30 on a touchdown saving tackle at the 29-yard line. Coming away with the tackle, though, was Chip Hudson. Skip, any time they run that play as we watch the rerun, Mondrell Lewis is liable to, to break it because Riders now is splitting out some, some receivers. And Marcus has got to respect those guys. They've got to send defensive backs out there with them. So their secondary is spread from sideline to sideline. And uh, the middle of the field is essentially linebackers only. And we've already seen that Mondrell Lewis is enough of a sprinter to outrun those linebackers. First and 10. 5.30 and clock ticking. On the inside handoff, Hickman for only a couple. You mentioned this, the uh, next person to score more than likely will squeeze this one out. Maybe. But you can't count the Marauders out of anything the way they came back right before halftime. And you can't count Jason Franz out with that uh, golden arm of his and the receivers he has to throw to. Play action. Flanagan has room to run and will. He may go. To the 20. Inside the 10. Touchdown, Ryder. 26-yard touchdown run as he sets up the pass and all kind of room on the left side to run. He's looking right, looking right. Now he comes to the left and says, hey, there's room on this sideline. And takes it the distance. 80 yards with the wind. 448 remains. A big extra point here from Daniel Rodriguez. You're exactly right. Big extra point. It is up. It is good. Rodriguez perfect tonight as far as extra points. And what a ball game this has been. It's not over yet, only because they score too early. <laughs> There's still 448 on the, on the uh, scoreboard clock. So anything could happen. When we come back, the Marauders will touch the football. And like I said, all they have to do is tie this ball game up. And they're in. The Raiders, they need to hold on and win this one to force the flip of the coin, which we'll talk more about as this fourth quarter continues. getting their money's worth here this afternoon. What a ball game this has been. 4.48 to play as the ball falls off the tee again. The Raiders have the lead 35-28 with 4.48 left. Skip, this is exactly the type of game that you and I looked for. We were talking before the game, offensive fireworks, neither team's defense is really being able to stop their opponents. And that kickoff is downtown. Through the end zone. Marauders have it at the 20, and they, as you mentioned, did not score in the first quarter. And moving that football into the win. And Skip, you and I just witnessed head coach Wayne LeBlu getting with Scott Saltzman, who's the anchor of that Raider defense. And he was wagging his finger in Scott Saltzman's face, saying, big guy, you've got to go out and prove it all over again right now. As we see, the Marauders averaging 28 points a game. They've got that 28, and they've got almost five minutes left to try to add to it. There's the draw to Cloud. Cloud has tackled. Cloud struck down finally at the 10-yard line on the defensive tackle was John Kunkel. The big sophomore. Kunkel with a key catch, and right now the Raiders are getting there defensively, but they're not wrapping up. He almost got away. 
as we look at it again. And he gets away there. Man falls off, and Kunkel just uh, got him by an ankle. If he missed him, he was he had room to run down the sideline. Second down and 19 now. Fake the draw. Looking to throw, pressure, gets rid of it. And a catch made at the 15, he steps out of bounds. Good catch over there, but as we mentioned, he steps out. That's Brian Smith. And a player is injured right now. That looks like Saltzman. Saltzman. Saltzman down inside the three-yard line. As we watch the replay right there, while the trainer is attending to Scott Saltzman, that should indicate just what sort of tight rope the Raider defense is walking. Had that pass been completed one step further inbounds, Brian Smith would be standing in the end zone right now. But he, he had to get away from... He had to get away from that pressure. Speaking of Franz, right now the stadium is hush as Salzman is down. There's 4.02 remaining, 35-28 as they Try to get Scott up, and while they do that, we'll come back and give the details on Scott Salsman. Not gonna happen to me. Not gonna happen, not gonna happen. Not gonna happen to me. I was really shocked when I found out I was infected. I didn't think anything like this could ever happen to me. Only certain people get it. I'm a good example that you can get AIDS from heterosexual sex. Who cares? I'm trying to make the best of the time that I have left, because realistically, I really don't know how much time that is. You could be putting yourself at risk. Call 1-800-342-AIDS. Salsman is okay and over to the sideline, walked off the field on his own power. Third down. Straight back, here comes the pressure. Hot and stuck. much extracurricular activity going on after that. Here's a look at it. There's the catch and there's the stick by Brian Lewis. I believe Brian Smith offered an opinion on uh, the ferocity of that hit. Marcus is going to be stuck with a penalty here. Personal foul. Yep. Maybe a little. Well, he might have threw, threw the football down or something after he made the catch. We're checking to see if we have it on tape. Because if uh, he gets up after the stick, throws the football down, the officials That's have to go chase the ball down. Delay of the game. That's it. That's it. All right. Delay of game, cost of five. No big deal. They will punt it. 340 and clock ticking. Nope, they won't punt. Barbaruski play. That's it. <laughs> Pulling the stunts out on that one. The Raiders there on the defense at the 20, and they will have the football with 332 remaining. Here's Let's a look see it at again. it. The, the snap front of the man. fullback. He hands it between the legs of the up back, number 40. He goes out of of his left tackle. I've seen that play go many, many times, but it didn't trick the Raiders at uh, that time. The key to that was everybody stayed home. There was no rush put on the punter. They were looking for something fancy anyway. Riders up seven it. points. They didn't need a punt block to win the game. And we are three minutes and 32 seconds away from coin flip time. And there's a timeout on the field. There is timeout on the field. What? A ball game. What a ball game. 35-28 the score. And while we have this time out, let's talk about that coin flip. Uh, I know neither one of us are familiar with the festivities <laughs> that uh, that they do, but an opportunity to, to talk about it. You've got four teams 
you know, the, what, the best way to do it is what, uh, everybody get a coin and flip and the odd man out or the exactly. odd man in? Exactly, you just keep flipping until you've got three heads and one tail or vice versa. Boy, what a way to make the playoffs, huh? Or what a that's way a, not to make the playoffs. Exactly. That's a rotten way to finish your season when now if the if the Raiders do hang on and win this game, they finish seven and three, Marcus seven and three, and all you can do at the end of that uh, that great season is to hope a quarter turns up the right way. Is there another way? Could uh, Texas high school football be changed? And you know, could there be overtimes and situations of a tie game and all of that? You know, all that is decided when they have these meetings that they have. The University Interscholastic League, which means the school superintendents will have to vote that in, and they have not as yet uh, voted to do that. Lewis, all they have to do is hold on to the football. Could use a first down on this drive, though. Yes, <laughs> we're, we're at 320, and uh, uh, Mr. Franz has shown uh, uh, the need for very little time to put the ball in the end zone thus far. But getting back to the point, you know, is there another way you talk about uh, total points scored and, you know, but then you get the opportunity of uh, getting a grudge match getting started because, you know, one team uh, runs the scoreboard up on you, so you can't go by total points. This is Montgomery. Montgomery to the 15 as we continue to talk about the coin flip. But, uh, you know, and you can't even go by uh, points allowed. You know, you, you think about points no. you scored, points allowed, because you'll get that grudge match going. If you, exactly. You're people and running up the score, or you have people on a blowout game still leaving their first team defense. It's a District 5-4A has a total point scored rule like that, and there was a little uh, altercation at the close of the Hershey Mineral Wells game to open the district when Hershey scored with less than a minute to go, and the Mineral Wells guys took offense. Yes. And uh, I guess yes. the kids were not aware of the fact that Hershey had to put some points on the board in case a tie came about in that district exactly here's Lewis won't have the first down it's fourth down oh my there is 206 and clock ticking they still have three timeouts over and they use one of them right now so two timeouts remaining for both teams and the Raiders are forced with a fourth and five they need a first down here they certainly do there's time out of the field 203 remaining. What a ball game this has been. 35-28. We're come back with the remaining 203 of this one. Don't go anywhere. It's not over till it's over. video every week. Fourth down. You see the score. Fourth and five. Flanagan on the rollout. Needs a block. And Flanagan will get to the 11 and will not pick up the first down. And as I mentioned, it's not over. Out comes the offense for Flower Mound Marcus. And they will have 89 yards to get something in the end zone. 154 left. Boy, you put a lot of pressure on your defense. All they needed was a first down in this game. More than likely inside minute 54 could have been over. And but they were they were very conservative. That's a defense that'll be without Scott Saltzman now. As you see him limping back over to the side. He's apparently just not 100%. And uh, Coach LeBlue's asking him if he thinks he can go. Shotgun formation. Franz awaiting the snap. Gets it. Pressure coming on. Gets out of the pocket now. Finally, it'll be sack time. They will mark it at the five-yard line on the sack. David Freeman, Ty Walker, both in there putting great pressure on Jason Franz. Marcus has really got a tough situation in their faces right now as we see the, the replay. Bam, bam. 
flat of his back on the three-yard line. Ryder knows they've got to pass. They can't run the ball up the field. So it's just, uh, it's totally rushing cover time. They have no other responsibilities right now. And do you think the key to this ball game will be as many points scored in this game that Marcus unable to score in the south end zone? That's why they lose the game? That's true. That's the difference in the game. I mean, you really think about it, even when they had the ball inside the five yard line down there. Exactly. And they ended up moving backwards 20 yards and missing a field goal attempt. Unable to score in the south end zone. And you take the one score that the Raiders had in the south end zone, which could be a key point in this ball game. 140 one, yeah, on one, the scoreboard and Marcus is down to one timeout. As Jason Franz stands in the shotgun formation in the end zone. Salzman back in there at the defensive end on the far side. And here comes the pressure. He gets away from that, throws it down the sideline, and it is picked off. Pierce with the INT. The Raiders will wrap this up. That was a 7-3 and three interception right there for Robin Pierce. That should be the game winner. Let's watch it again from the quarterback's perspective. Great camera angle. Had to throw it on the run. Golly, took it from Pierce him, exactly, aggressively went for the ball. He wasn't going to allow that catch and then try to make a quick tackle. As we see Rashad Hickman being helped to the side. This has really been a hard-hitting contest, Skip, all the way through. Saltzman limping off with help. Uh, Hickman uh, coming to the side with help. Marcus has had a number of guys that have had their bell rung uh, more than once this afternoon. These two teams have both been very serious about winning this ball game. So Ryder gets another possession on the Marcus 20. All we'll do right now is just back off touch a knee to the ground and Marcus can only stop the clock one more time and that's it second down the Marauders choose to let the clock run after this play 111 110 remaining in the game Vermont Flanagan not even up under his center yet. He will use the play clock. It's down under 10 now. As much of it as he can. Three, two, they snap the ball. Marauders roll. Should use a timeout. And there it is right there. And they will use their last timeout with 50 seconds to play in this ball game. Now, I want to remind you, before we do, uh, well, let's do Bobby Evans, and I'll remind you about something else. Bobby Evans Sporting Goods, for all your sporting good needs, give him a call at 723-1459, or stop by and see him at 2404 Kemp. Bobby Evans Sporting Goods. Now, let me remind you that immediately following the ball game, we will try to stay up and give you the insights about the coin flip. Because from those of you that are watching tonight's telecast may not have know, you know, what happened or how it took place and all of that and hopefully after this ball game we're going to chance to either speak with Wayne LeBlu or they will be on their way to the press box or maybe even to the uh, little administration office that they have over on the uh, left side of the clubhouse down there. So we'll talk a little bit more about the coin flip and what's going to have to happen for one of the four teams to get in. And if I'm not mistaken, all four teams are represented here this afternoon. But regardless if the Raiders make the playoffs or not, what a ball game this has been. They take the knee down again, and depending on the spot or when they finally blow this one into play, I don't know. Let's see. And there it is right there, it's fourth down. They have to snap the ball one more time. The Marauders cannot stop it. And you don't want to take a knee here because that'll stop the clock for a, uh, a change. 
I believe they're going to take the delay a game penalty. Eight seconds difference between the game clock and the play clock. All right. You so take, uh, take the delay a game penalty and exactly. then take the snap, and that should do it. The Raiders will not even come out of the huddle. They'll take the flag. There it is for delay. There are eight seconds left. So they will uh, snap the ball now. and uh, You can't knee it, though. No. You can't knee it. You've got to run a play. I would like, uh, I would imagine that uh, we'd see Ramon Flanagan just roll out and try to stay live for eight seconds. He can run backwards toward his goal line. And that's what they're calling timeout right now. The Raiders are to come over and find out. Flanagan can take the ball and just and retreat. Run straight back. Exactly. And then <laughs> he can go all the way in for a safety. That's true, too. <laughs> but I'm not sure he doesn't want to do that. But no, for eight seconds, sure. Ramon's got the. 59 yards. <laughs> he could run backwards. Hey, there's a. <laughs> See if you can catch a, me, guys. Well, Flatting is a little quicker <laughs> than Lewis. Let's get the ball to Lewis. You know how long it took him to run that long run. Give the ball to Lewis. Let him run backwards. Huh? I don't think we even <laughs> want to hand the ball off and take the chance of a fumble. Yeah, that's true, too. The clock stops and uh, will not start until the Marauders then would snap the, the ball and give them one play. That may be all Jason Franz needs to put it in the end zone. No one leaving this one yet, although the Marauders fans on the far side thinking, hey, something, anything could happen. There's as many football games as we've both witnessed. Games like this, anything could happen. They can have a fumble, get the fumble recovery, have time for one last play in the end zone, and, you know, I've seen it happen. Eight seconds remaining. We will find out what they will do. Full house backfield. Marauders will more likely send everybody. All right, there's a rollout that you talked about. He avoids one tackler. Three seconds, two seconds, one. And he got out of bounds with one second. He got out of bounds with one second. There's one second on the clock. The Marauders will touch the football and will have one opportunity to throw it in the end zone. That's hard to believe. Inexplicably, Ra Ramon just turned out of bounds instead of heading back up the field towards his own goal line in order to keep the clock live. Wayne LeBlue's feverishly requesting another timeout to try to set a defense out on the field. You know what Marcus is going to do, and that doesn't make it any easier to stop them knowing they're going to pass to the end zone. Hmm. Let's hope that doesn't come back to haunt the Raiders. My, oh my, I just got done telling you anything could happen. Sure hope you didn't turn this one off. Here's a reaction of head coach Wayne LeBlu. Here it is, eight seconds, three seconds, two seconds. He thinks it's over now. He looks up there and says, oh no, we got one second left. He goes over to talk to Flanagan and says, oh no. We give them one opportunity to tie this thing up. And the last thing that Coach Britton had thought about was, hey, they're not going to give us any time. Everybody on the far side thinking about this one as we take a look, if we can, since we can't talk to our director, but we'll take a look at the far side and a chance to take a look at everybody down on their, everybody down on their knees over there for the Marauders, knowing this is the opportunity. They get the touchdown and the extra point. This game is over. No, no one actually the sideline. I want to see the sideline. <laughs> no one's sitting down in the stands, Kim. There they are. You see them at the top of the picture right, right. there. All right, here it is. Three wide outs to the top. Everybody playing deep. Franz, straight back. Pressure from Salzman. He makes the tackle. This ball game is over. And Scott Salzman is getting mobbed. Make that mugged by his teammates. Of that on the 35-yard line, maybe from the 30 to the 40, as we see it again, and Franz never had a chance to win the game. Scott Salsman makes the play of the game his fourth defensive sack of the ball game. That's why he was uh, in Texas football as one of the blue chip linemen in the state of Texas preseason. 35-28. It's a final. Stay with us. The coin flip is next as we go to the fifth quarter. 
of this high school football action. The Raiders win it on the scoreboard. It's a four-way tie for the second and third spot in the playoffs. We'll come back and talk a little bit more about that. Stay with us. The post-game show is next on WFTV. The Leather Spheroid. Sunday nights, these gladiators come to cable to play. Once again, this season, you get two channels of exclusive NFL action on cable. TNT kicks off the season with high-flying fun through October 27th. Then ESPN runs it to the playoffs. Sunday night NFL on ESPN and TNT. This fall, your cable subscriptions work more than ever. Coming through for you. On Vista Cablevision. Skip Boyden with head coach Wayne LeBlue, and uh, Wayne, what a ball game, huh? Well, it was a good spectator's game. It was awful rough on coaches. We talked about the game being played in, in quarters. The uh, the Raiders came out 21-0. You did what you had to do, and I figured you wanted to put as many points on the scoreboard as you could in quarter number one. Well, we had to. You know, uh, the win was such a factor. That's the first time I've ever taken the win when I won the flip, but I knew it would be a factor. And uh, obviously through the game, the team that had the wins, the one scored the points. Coach, exactly. The difference in this ball game was the one touchdown Mondrell Lewis ran in against the win in the second quarter. That, that's right, Terry. That was, the I think, the only touchdown scored going into the win. It was such a big play. We were losing momentum. And really, we were trying to run the time off the clock, get in at halftime and regroup. And uh, he breaks the 65-yard on isolation. You know, he's a great back. And... God, he's meant a lot to us. Coach LeBlue, have you been working on your coin flip this week? Well, I haven't practiced <laughs> it yet. I hope it's lucky the first time. Okay. You know, I'm a believer in fate, and I believe these kids have won three in a row, and I just think they deserve it so much, I believe we're going to be lucky on the flip. Okay, give us a quick rundown of what's about to happen. Well, we're going to go in, and we're going to flip Haltom, Louisville, Marcus, and ourselves. Uh, they're going to eliminate two of those four on the coin flip, and the other two are going to the playoffs. Coach, is there a better way to do this? Well, you know, I don't know if there's a better way to do it or not. Uh, you don't want to go on statistics because then you take out the big plays in a ball game, but a coin flip's a tough way to do it. I, I don't know if there's a good way. All right, well, uh, congratulations on the win, and, hey, I got my fingers crossed for you for the coin flip. Huh? Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, head coach Wayne LeBlue as the Raiders win this one by a score of 35-28. to 28. And what a game, Terry Richter. What a game. It was exactly what we thought it would be. It was all we thought it would be, and it came down to a play with one second left. And in a game with offensive fireworks, it seems like at every snap, it was a defensive play that won the ball game. You talked about the offensive player of the game. Can, can we give two shirts out? Mondrell Lewis with a fine job, and also, of course, Scott Salzman with a fine job defensively as well. So... Great job done, and uh, not just to highlight those two players, but you have to give credit to everybody. You know, offensive line did a fine job, defensive secondary, uh, as far as that's concerned. Brian Lewis had some good defensive sticks. Robin Pierce had a, uh, some INTs here tonight. I mean, everybody. Exactly. Uh, about five turnovers for the Marauders just destroyed their chances. Three interceptions of Jason Fryan's passes, a couple of fumble recoveries. The Raiders had their turnovers also. Both teams had lots of chances to win, and really every possession was a chance to score. <laughs> exactly. All righty, I'm going to make my way down to the administra administrative uh, offices down there because I'm sure that's where the coin flip is going to be. So I'm on my way down that way and stay with us, fans. We're, I'll have the hopefully the play-by-play -play descriptive blow of how this coin flip actually works. And we'll be ready next time we have another one of these coin flips. I'll tell you all the exciting details. It's up and coming. Post-game show continues after these fine words from our fine sponsors. Once again, the Ryder Raiders win this ball game 35-28. You've been watching the Game of the Week. Stay with us on WFTV. The Hampton Inn, just off I-44 in Wichita Falls, would like to invite you to stay with them when you come to support your favorite sports team. Hampton Inns offers superior guest rooms with non-smoking rooms also available. The Hampton Inn has free continental breakfast for their guests. 
free local phone calls, pay-per-view movies, and remote control television, which feature CNN, ESPN, and Showtime. In addition, the third and fourth person stay free, and children under 18 stay free with their parents. Also, guests have access of local racquetball club and fitness center. So when you're in town cheering on your favorite sports team, come relax with us at the Hampton Inn, your home away from home, on I-44 just off the Marine Street exit in Wichita Falls. For reservation, dial 766-3300 or 1-800-HAMPTON. Strengthen your swing and improve your game at Lakeside Pitch and Golf. Practice your batting techniques with their baseball and softball pitching machines. Just 25 cents for seven pitches or polish up your stroke on the 13-acre driving range. Just $3 for a large bucket of balls or $2.50 for a small bucket. Lakeside Pitch and Golf is just a short drive from Weeks Park and they're open Tuesday to Sunday till dark, weather permitting. Lakeside Pitch and Golf, one mile past the State Hospital on the Archer City Highway. performances coming through on cable 1200 hours every month on Vista Cablevision back at Memorial Stadium in Wichita Falls Texas and I have just experienced my very first coin flip as far as uh, advancing to the playoffs. Now, in talking a little bit about that, as I uh, skimmed through some of my notes, it was a closed door session. They took all four coaches from representing all the four schools and put them in one room. Okay, so uh, uh, we were able to nudge the door open just a bit to hear what was going on. Then they went into another room to flip. So we really had to almost put our, uh, our uh, ears to the door to find out what was going on. On the flip of the coin, it was the first man out. As far as the first odd man was out, they flipped the coins. The Raiders flipped up heads. Everybody else was tails. The Raiders are in the playoffs. As far as the rest of the teams, on the next coin flip was made, and after that, it was Louisville, the next odd one. So it's Ryder and Louisville, and that does it. Of course, don't forget Sherman, who won the uh, uh, district outright, so they're in the playoffs no matter what. So now it's time to set up a few of the matchups for you right quick. As, as far as the Ryder Raiders here locally, they will look to play either Irving MacArthur or Irving Nimitz. All right, Irving MacArthur with a key game tonight. That's where I'll be headed as soon as I leave here tonight. I'll be going to that football game as they will play that one in Irving right down the street from where I live. So I'll get a chance to take a look at that. I have seen both of those two teams play, so it doesn't matter. They're both ground-oriented. Of course, we have also seen head coach Ray Overton for Irving MacArthur as well. We've seen them. Now, when it comes down to where they're going to play, that's also a key factor. As far as that is concerned, they were talking about the uh, flip for home and home. All right, and, and, you, and you talk about the flip for home and home. You talk about either playing at Texas Stadium or playing here. As far as uh, uh, Irving MacArthur and Irving Nimitz, they both play at the same field. It's a grass field and uh, not great shape and not good for footing wise as far as the speed of uh, Mundrell Lewis and everybody else. But uh, anyway, that sizes that up. So it will either be Irving MacArthur or Irving Nimitz will play the Ryder Raiders. Now, on down the line, we talk a little bit about what Louisville and who they will be playing. Louisville will be the uh, big school. They will go in as the big school, and they will more than likely play L.D. Bell. All right, you know how Bell is tough, and that will be a key game for them. And then, of course, on down the line, let me, excuse me one second, let me turn the page because I get an opportunity to talk about uh, the third team in the playoffs, and that will uh, get my, my notes straight. Sherman, okay, Sherman goes in as the small school. They were the, the smallest school, so they're in the playoffs in the, in the small school division along with Ryder Raiders. So uh, Louisville off to the playoffs, the big school playoff, which is uh, different from the others, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. So uh, once again, Sherman is in, Ryder is in, and Louisville is in. So the Ryder Raiders have made the playoffs, and a joyful celebration took place in the locker room. I mean, everybody's hugging everybody. I got a few of the players looked at me and said, yes, Skip, 
we're in. You can't count us out. We're in. The luck of the draw, or make it the luck of the coin flip. And yes, the Ryder Raiders are in, plus the good game that they played here tonight. Coach LeBlue said to his team, hey, there was no way that we couldn't get in as far as after coming off and winning three straight games. He said, I told my team we were going to need some help. We got the help we needed, and we are in the playoffs. So a joyful time for head coach and all the coaches, Wayne LeBlue and everybody, and the Ryder Raiders are in. So the dilemma is here. As far as now, next, it, we'll find out uh, where they're going to play it at. They'll have a meeting tomorrow and uh, discuss that. But uh, who cares? They're in. If it's a road trip, I'm sure hopefully WFTV will try to get you there with all the action. As far as some of the highlights, there's only two highlights to show you here in the second half, and we'll go over those right now. First, we'll take a look at the Marauders' touchdown, which tied this football game up. Keep Brenton made the right call. If they can get into the end zone here and tie the game up and going for the win in third quarter would have proven to be a good call. Complete and he slips by everybody. A race to it, the end zone. Owens, the last person to catch him. He gets out of the play. It's a touchdown. The Marauders got on the scoreboard and they tied this ball game up and as we were saying in the third and fourth quarter, all they needed was a tie and they would automatically be in the playoffs. But uh, it came down to the fourth and final quarter where the Ryder Raiders finally had to get something going and had to come down with a drive of their own to finally take the lead. Play action. Flanagan has room to run and will. He may go to the 20, inside the 10, touchdown, Ryder. Ramon Flanagan ices it away, but as, of course, as Terry Richter said earlier, I think the real icer was the Mundrell Lewis run from 65 yards out into the win, which actually sews this thing up, but a great run from Flanagan all night long. Great job by everybody. Of course, Scott Saltzman on the defense of the last play of the ball game. So, uh, hey, great plays offensively, defensively, a super game, and the Raiders go on and win this one. I'd like to thank everybody who's had a part of this one. Also, uh, thanking all the fine people that have stayed, uh, as far as the camera guys are concerned, making it a long afternoon. But, hey, it was well worth it for a Ryder Raider win. The Raiders are in the playoffs. Uh, the Coyotes are in the playoffs. And our next telecast will definitely be, well, I, I won't say definitely because we don't know when the Ryder Raider game is going to be. And that's a, a big 5A game, so we don't know if they're going to try to play that on a Friday night or Saturday night. So in the works, the Coyotes will be playing Fouts Field. We'll try to have that one for you in Denton as they get set to play Everman. And the Ryder Raiders will either play Irving MacArthur or they will play uh, Irving Nimitz. And hopefully it'll be home and home and maybe they can get a home game out of it on a Saturday afternoon. Who knows? Hopefully we'll try to bring you both ball games if possible. So a lot of playoff action up and coming. Hopefully uh, the uh, MSU Indians are in the playoffs by now and hey, it'll be playoff galore to go out and support your favorite high school or MSU. For everybody who's had a part of this one, I'm Skip Boyden for Terry Richter and our entire broadcast crew. So long, everybody, from Memorial Stadium until next week. It's playoff time, and WFTV is on the road. So long, everybody.